All right then, what's happening, people? What's popping? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you lot are doing well. Welcome to today's video. You know what? Something I want to do something different now, right? So Football Therapy is going pretty well. I'm really enjoying making content, Chelsea content, and I will continue to do that. And I will eventually branch out with different kind of a different kind of football content. But at the moment, I'm keeping it Chelsea. I like doing the Chelsea News series where I sort of consolidate research and Chelsea news, present it to you guys and give you my opinion on the matter. Of course I do the odd match preview, most notably though I do match uh, reviews as well, talk about players and a couple of other video styles as well. But I want to start doing like a recurring series, right? Something where I can just talk more about football, about Chelsea in my opinion, what's going on. Something that you guys know that you'll be returning back to something where I'm expressing my thoughts on a topic. Do you know what I mean? So I'm going to name it and wait for this football therapy. <laughs> yes, the series name is going to match the channel name, but whenever you see the hashtag football therapy in the title, know that it's me talking about a theme rather than a particular type of video, whether that be a player statistical video or Chelsea news. Something that you know you'll come back and you're going to get my opinion on Chelsea on a topic. So, this is the first episode of Football Therapy then I guess. And if you're new to the channel, Football Therapy, man this is going to get confusing. Please make sure you do subscribe, hit the bell notifications icon, and why not follow me on Instagram as well for Instagram lives in the evenings. Alright, let's get into it. So today I want to talk about the big burning question. Can Chelsea secure top 4 Champions League football without any these signings. I've kind of touched on this a little bit. People's perceptions have changed. Obviously there's a lot of perhaps negative feeling around the club, certainly around the Chelsea fan base. Uh, uncertainty. A lot of people are backing the manager now which is nice. While well, I just wait for this motorbike to go past. Come on man. Sweet. A lot of people are backing Frank Lampard at the moment which is good. Him not getting backed by the board or not getting any signings is oddly kind of unified a lot of the Chelsea fan base which I guess every cloud right obviously Frank Lampard came out a bunch of times and said yes we need reinforcements yes we need to strengthen he was talking over and over about the loss of Eden Hazard he spoke about that all throughout the season pre-season and indeed after not receiving any transfers in the winter transfer window so he's unhappy we know that Lampard also came out with some quotes relatively recently saying we're underdogs now man that's it you know we're sure we're just in top four at the moment we had that small cushion but the fact of the matter is all these teams around us that were going to put pressure on us anyway they have all strengthened right think about it manchester united have signed bruno fernandez which is a huge huge signing plus they've got the loan of an additional striker in the shape of Odi and Agalu. you know they're making moves man Spurs have obviously signed a forward as well I'm not going to try and pronounce his name because you know who he is <laughs> and Arsenal getting a centre back all the teams around us or certainly near I know Arsenal aren't near Chelsea but you know there'll be a few Arsenal fans that still think maybe just maybe top four right obviously Wolves are a serious competitor and incidentally Sheffield United are the closest of the lot but I'm still not convinced on them I mean I'm probably a fool to be sleeping on them but in terms of a top four challenger man I just I don't know I just feel weird about it I just feel weird about it but maybe Sheffield are certainly an innovative and exciting side so let's take a moment in this football therapy session and think about what the state of play is for Chelsea at the moment. In fact, after the transfer window, I want to look at the bookies' odds who are favourite to reach top four. I imagine it's Chelsea, but I wonder what the odds are. Hold on. <laughs> All right, so the outright winner, you'll be interested to know. Chelsea are a thousand to one to win the Premier League, with Liverpool being one to five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Even City is 66 to 1, but we all already knew that. Chelsea are 1500 to 1 to get relegated. I'm not sure that could ever happen. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, so yeah, Chelsea are still heavy favourites to finish in the top four on one of these odds checker websites. Chelsea are 2 to 5. So obviously, Liverpool, you don't even get odds on it because they're in the top four. Man City are one over 250. Uh, Leicester is odds on one to 16. Chelsea are two to five. Now the next one down is Tottenham at four to one and Man United at five to one. So both of them are genuinely contenders, especially they've made those signings. So sure, Frank Lampard said Chelsea are 
underdogs, but the bookies still make Chelsea favourites to finish top four. Now that would probably be due to their actual points cushion at the moment, and Chelsea are generally a good team, but... I wonder if they're taking into account some nuances of what's going on and, you know, how Chelsea have dealt with problems recently. Obviously, they want to finish off chances and Frank Lampard wanted the signings. But I have said it in previous videos and I will say it again. Chelsea have crucial players returning from injury. Of course, Christian Pulisic will be back after the break. He'll be huge. Obviously, he went for a superb run of form where he scored that hat trick, a couple of, a couple of other goals on top, had some superb moments of play when he you know demonstrated his ability like in the super cup and just throughout the season he was a bit of a shining light so him coming back will be huge for chelsea football club he looks very close indeed reese james now cementing his place in the right back position is huge and also we can't put all our apples in this basket but i've talked about it recently on the channel before ruben loftus cheek coming back into the side will be massive because he's the kind of player that could muscle his way into a starter very very quickly if he finds form again not only that a genuine game changer look at all chelsea's midfielders top 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 quality talented midfielders in the shape of um golo kante Jorginho, kovacic and you know still developing mason mount has often been uh, leaving chelsea fans frustrated still very young though uh, he can become top tier but i'm not saying he's anywhere near it at the moment point being there's options in the midfield but none of them are really a game changers Sure, N'Golo Kante can link up play well and he's really good into an interceptive midfielder. Jorginho, we know his qualities as we know of Kovacic. Um, Mason Mount can be good systemically in terms of pressing, but I think he needs to be taken out of the team for a little while, personally. But none of them really offer that game-changer value going forwards like Ruben Loftus-Cheek can. He's a goal scorer. He progresses the ball really like radically. Do you know what I mean? He's not going to dribble and look for a pass. He's going to just straight up carry the ball through the midfield and body opposition players out of possession. Now, this is what he can do. I'm not saying he's going to do it as a given, or I'm not saying it's a given when he comes back into the team, but it's in his locker in terms of his natural ability. He will be massive to Chelsea upon his return. So when the bookmakers make Chelsea favourites, are they taking into account the fact how Pulisic and Loftus-Cheek are yet to come back in the team and when they're back in and rotated that will be massive for Chelsea I'm not so sure but the truth is both of them are dude these motorbikes man are we done? I think it's that traffic light I'm going to leave this in just to show you guys what I'm dealing with in my apartment at the moment near the high street Sunday all these motorcycles come out Anyway, oh yeah, Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Pulisic coming back into the side. So both of them should be back in after this break in February. And that will be huge for Chelsea. That will give them... Um, I don't want to say it will be like new signings, because it's not new signings. It's players that have trained with the first team. But it will be a massive boost for Frank Lampard's Blues. And hopefully they can do the business when they're back in the side. Because we all know, again in that Leicester game, the first half, so many chances carved out and created as often the way of Chelsea in first halves. If you've got another two players that can convert chances in the shape of Christian Pulisic and Ruben Loftus-Cheek, that can only be a positive thing. So do I think Chelsea can reach the top four? What do I think? I'm going to give you my opinion. So like every other Chelsea fan on the planet, I've been left super frustrated because Chelsea probably should be another nine points clear and that's allowing certain mistakes and losses along the way like silly mistakes that you're going to get in a young naive team with a relatively young and naive coach but still Chelsea are behind where they should be I'm not saying they're underachieving because they're not in generally they're overachieving but in the context of the season how they started well how the chemistry between the coach and the players is a good one Chelsea should be doing better but I do think I do think Chelsea are going to make top four. I think they're going to finish fourth. I genuinely, unless Leicester have a real slip up. I know they've been poor of late and obviously they had that really disappointing result against Aston Villa in the semi-final, in the cup semi-final of the Carabao Cup. And uh, Aston Villa lost again today to Bournemouth. So I don't know what's going on there. But Leicester are a really good team and they demonstrated that against Chelsea, certainly more so in the second half. I can't, they've got a decent cushion on Chelsea. I don't see them dropping out or, 
you know, really, you can't... Have, I was going to say earlier in the season, yeah, we can get third, yeah, we can overtake Leicester, but I'm at the point now where I'm like, no, we can't. It's literally four for nothing now. And when there's just one spot and maybe two or three, four teams, that fancy, maybe, just maybe we can do it. It's going to be incredibly tight, do you know what I mean? And that means the pressure will be on Chelsea, where the pressure is not on Leicester now. Do you see what I mean? And that's a superb thing that's afforded to them. Pressure's huge, and young players might crumble under pressure, but still, despite everything, I do think Chelsea will reach top four. Uh, maybe I'm not as certain as the bookies are with those odds, but I do feel like if I was to, you know, bet money, I'd say yes, they will. Hopefully they can rally together and find a little bit of better form. But we will have to see. Well, I want to get you guys' opinions. So this, I want to be more interactive in the comments for this series of football therapy. So you guys let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you think Chelsea can reach top four? What are the odds in your opinion? Do you see what are the biggest obstacles in the way? Get down into the comment section and let me know. If you're new to football therapy, guys, I'd urge you guys to subscribe to the channel, please. Hit the bell notifications icon after you've subscribed because that really does help. Why not like this video as well if you've enjoyed the content? Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, you lot. Enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby